Welcome to Cleves Tech and another video in our Focus for Stable Diffusion series of videos. In this video, I'll go over how to customize your Focus experience. If you want to change the default settings when Focus loads or want to change the output folder, as well as many other options, this video will show you how. Don't miss my other videos covering all aspects of Focus from installation to poses and face swap. As far as the config file goes with Focus, we would find it in the primary Focus folder. Let's uh, start in there. And you're going to notice I actually have another folder in here. This is actually where I back up my files, like my config file and anything like that. How you do it is up to you, but I do recommend backing it up after you've made some changes and before you make more changes. That way you can always at least put that file back in there with your latest correct version. Anything goes wrong or you need to do anything, you can always delete the config file and Focus will create a new one, a default one, when you run it. So inside your focus folder, you're going to go down, you're going to find the config.txt file. And there's also a config modification tutorial txt file. These are the two files that we're going to be mostly referencing here. The config file is the one that you're actually going to be editing. That's the one that focus uses when it starts up. The modification tutorial that we don't change. That just has a lot of the changes and shows you examples of how you can do certain things. To start off with, let's um, go ahead and open the config.txt file. Now, I've already edited mine. So what I'm going to do actually is to get it the default one. I'm going to go ahead and just show you if we delete this, it's fine. So in here, what's going to happen is when I go ahead and run you're going to watch in here and it'll actually create a new file when we run that. Boom. So now we have the default one that was just created again. At any point, if you need to go back to that default file, you can just delete the original or delete the config file, launch it, and it will create a new default one, but it won't have any changes that you've made. So that's why I suggest once you start making changes, make backups of the files so you can always go back to one that you know that worked if you run into any sort of issues. So now that we have the default one, I'm going to go ahead and open that up to show you what it looks like. So this would be the one that you'd start off with. Now, there's a couple things to keep in mind. When you make changes to this, if you put, if there's any syntax errors in here, it won't load. Well, let me show you exactly how this will work. So. One of the big errors a lot of people make is they leave a comma at the end before this final bracket. They'll put the comma down there. You want to make sure when you're copying and pasting from other portions or anything like that, you remove that final comma. You do want all the commas between all these other ones, but you don't want it on the final one. The other one that's a big mistake is these, you'll notice, are double backslashes instead of just one. That you want to make sure of because by default, that's what it's going to look like if you were to paste it from anywhere else. So you need to have those two bra two backslashes, not one. If there's any single ones in there, you're going to get the error as well. So I'm going to go ahead and save this just to give you an example of how what will happen. We'll see here. We get an error. And it explains possible options of what you're most likely the problem is. And so this is going to actually load. Let me hit enter to show you. This is actually going to go ahead and load with the standard default configuration. It won't load that file because it, it detects a syntax error. So if that if you make changes and when you load it, those changes aren't in effect, most likely you'll find this error at the top. And you'll want to fix whatever the um, syntax error is. Okay, so let's uh, close this down. I'm going to go into my focus folder again. I'm going to open the text file. I'm going to now fix the error that I've created. And I'll save that. And now that will be fine. Now, there's a few different ones. I'm not going to show you every single possible thing that you can do here. I'm going to show you the most common ones that most people are going to use. So one of the big ones is the output folder. A lot of people like to have a specific output folder, a different one than what they normally use. As we see here, the path outputs, that's where Focus is going to save your 
files when it generates them. It's going to create a new folder for each day in this folder that you have here. Normally, that's inside the focus folder. But if you want to have it outside the focus folder, you can change that. So for example, on mine, it's the F drive from my computer, which is actually where I have focus as well. But I want it to do it right in the top folder. So I've created a folder. As you can see here, it generates in these. Now, the easiest way to do this is once you've created the folder and then you need to have these folders created, you can't just type them in and focus won't generate them. So you already have to have the folder created before you run focus or you're going to get an error as well. So once I've done this, I'm just going to copy the file location. That's the easiest way. Then I'm going to open my text, my config file. Now we were doing the outputs. So in here, I'm going to go into the path and I'm just going to go ahead and paste what I just copied. Now, if I go ahead and save that, it's not going to work. Reason being, I didn't add the extra backslash. So I need to put two of those in there. Anywhere that there's a backslash, I need to make sure there's two of them in that file path. If I had subfolders, I would need to put it in each one of those as well, like you can see up here. And that's all there is to it. I'll go ahead and save that. Now, when I generate in that folder is where focus is save those files. The same thing can be done with pretty much pretty much all the other folders. Now, a lot of people probably aren't going to want to change a lot of these folders, but if you want to be able to run multiple uh, versions of focus, or if you have other stable diffusion user interfaces you want to run and you want to use the same checkpoints and LoRa's, it they, those take up a lot of room. And when you have four or five different ones going, that's a lot of extra space. So it's nice to be able to have all your checkpoints in one location and each thing can pull from those checkpoints. So for like myself, I have an AI folder and in here I have my models and then I have checkpoints and I have LoRa's. So in order to use this, I go up, I'm gonna copy the path. I'll go into my config file and then I can go up highlight my checkpoint folder because it's the path for my checkpoints as stated here path checkpoints i'm going to paste but obviously we can't keep it like that because that'll generate an error i need to go in on each one of these and add an extra backslash and always make sure you didn't have any comma at the end here i can go ahead and save that and now it'll load that those checkpoints from that folder. So I have one also for LoRa's. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to copy. I'll open up my text file here. I'm going to paste it. Now I have my LoRa's folder. I need to add the backslashes. Otherwise, you'll get those syntax errors. And we're going to hit save. Now it'll load the LoRa's and the checkpoints from those locations. And it should also download any it needs in those locations. And we'll demonstrate that. So I haven't put anything in this LoRa folder. Uh, I didn't move my other ones over just so I can demonstrate what will happen when I go ahead and launch that. So let's go ahead and launch Look, Focus because as we know, Focus, when it first runs these things, it'll download any of the checkpoints or anything that it needs. As we'll see, it's downloading it and it downloaded it into that folder. That's how you change the file path with the config file. Okay, so that covers the, the file path. Now there's a lot of other things we can add to this. I'll go over a few of them just to give you an idea. In the config tutorial, like I said, that's where a lot of the examples are. So we're gonna go in here for one would be the aspect ratios. Maybe you don't want all those aspect ratios. You only use a few of them. So you want to get rid of most of them. Well, we could go through, get rid of any of the ones that we don't want. And I'm just going to do that just to show you when I launch it. So that way uh, over here, when uh, in the advanced tab, this will eliminate and only show these aspect ratios over here next time we launch it. Now, some of the other useful ones that I prefer is the default aspect ratio is another very useful one because there's a lot of times I always use the same aspect ratios. So 
so we can put that one in there and then it would default. Now, if I wanted, let's say to be 1024 by 1024, I could change that to that. Now, when I launch it, the default aspect ratio over on the side here will always be the 1024 instead of the other one. Now, a, a few other things that you can change that are, I find very useful. Um, let's say you have a, a negative prompt that you always wanted. You could put that in there and type out what the negative prompt would be. If you wanted a default prompt, you could choose that as well. I These are the ones I actually use. And I change these because I almost always use quality. I always want that advanced checked off. I prefer up to 64 images. And I like to have the default image number is four. Now, there's a lot of these other ones in here. You can change the default scales. You can change pretty much almost anything you can think of can be changed in here. I'm just gonna show those for now. Now, one thing I gotta make sure of is since I copied and pasted it in here, it added that comma at the end. So I wanna get rid of that because we don't want that before that last bracket. Everything else is ready. So I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna go ahead and relaunch focus to show the difference And as you can see here, the advanced is already checked off as we had told it. The image number is set to four. These are the only aspect ratios that are offered. It's already set on quality. Now I didn't put anything in the negative prompt, but if I had, it would have put that already in there. The same with the styles, anything like that would have changed. That makes it very useful if you're, you're always using the same settings. You can have it always launch with those same settings. You don't have to go through each time and change everything around. That should get you started with customizing your focus experience. Don't forget to back up the config file before you make any changes and double check for any syntax errors that may cause focus to not load the config file if you run into problems. The comma at the end and these double backslashes are the two biggest ones that people will run into. If you found this video helpful, please do consider clicking the like button because it definitely does help. And questions or suggestions for video ideas, please leave a comment. Thanks for watching, and don't forget that I do have other videos on Focus, and we'll have more in the future. Have a great day.